Hello and welcome to another episode of the CG Garage. This is episode number 348, featuring Paul Deasy, lead character modeler at uh, Giant Animation. Uh, he was a really cool guy. He was actually a person that one of our listeners requested would be on, right? And so there's mm -hmm. a several people who are part of the the the, the, um, the ZBrush teams or the ZBrush community, and he's one of the guys out there. And so we got a suggestion. I got in touch with the Pixelogic guys, and they were super nice, and they got me in touch with Paul. So uh, there'll be a couple more probably coming from them. So thanks to the Pixel Pixelogic guys for the connection. But uh, Paul was just such a sweet and interesting and really great guy. So Kristen, what did you think of uh, what do you think of Paul? Um, yeah, well, it was a great listen. One, the accent made it made everything. Um, but his love of character modeling is it was just like a great story to listen to. He kind of gets into a deep dive of character modeling. And as you mentioned, maybe his hi Irish heritage has a little influence on his storytelling, which he likes to be a bit more dramatic with his lighting. Um, and he's just really encouraging to all artists um, and also lends like a nice respectful way to reach out to artists that you might admire. Um, like if you watch him via stream or discord. Um, yeah, it, it was just that was great. And then he also uh, talks about not getting in like wrapped up in the like follow world with like Instagram and because that actually takes away from the beauty of like why you're an artist. So, um, yeah, it was all over just a, a great Great podcast. Yeah, he really sort of, you know, uh, like a, he's very humbling and very humble uh, in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really kind of a, a wonderful thing because he really sort of tells, you know, or tries to remind you why he does it and why you should probably be doing it. Don't do it because you want the likes and follows on Instagram. That's not mm -hmm. that's not what art is about. Uh, and it's about making you feel a certain emotion. And that emotion doesn't have to be the adrenaline when someone hits the like button. So uh, I just think it's really cool what he he's doing. And I really appreciate uh, him coming on. And I'd love to I'd love to meet him in person. Like you said, you know, yes. share a beer with him. Uh, anyway, uh, great. Kristen, we have a couple of quick announcements. Something's happening as of tomorrow when this podcast comes out. So it'll be the next day, right? What's going on? Yep. So you can find this out at chaos.com slash events. On November 2nd, there's going to be a Power of V-Ray 5 for Rhino webinar, which will be hosted by Chaos and 3DWS. Um, and then also you can find this out. Actually, this is our student rendering challenge, which has been going on since September. But this year's theme is create a better world. Um, so you can share your vision of whatever you would like to um, submit for a chance to win V-Ray uh, Education Collection, Collection, Corona Licenses, Chaos Cloud Credits, and a lot more. Um, submissions end November 23rd. Um, and it's a little bit of a, a long uh, URL, but chaos.com slash create dash a dash better dash world. So you can find it on our website. So create a better world with dashes between all the words. Yes. Right? Super easy. <laughs> all right. Again, <laughs> chaos.com slash create a better world with dashes between all the words. Uh, cool. That's really great. Uh, excited uh, to find out what people will submit there. If people want to know more about the podcast, where can they go, Kristen? You can go to facebook.com slash CG Garage Podcast or chaos.com slash CG Garage. And if you'd like to watch us, go to youtube.com slash chaos group TV. Yes, indeed. In fact, I should note that if you guys are watching us, you will notice that I am actually outside. And the reason I'm outside is I'm preparing for a podcast that I'm going to record in person. It'll be the, f and you know, figure outside is the safest place these days to do things in person like this uh but i have not done a podcast in person in like 18 months so it's very exciting uh so that's the reason i'm outside so but so it'd be fun it'd be fun to come watch us now obviously the podcast is in video form and also a lot of fun to do that and if you guys have ideas of podcasts you'd like to do including hey chris if you're going to do them in person uh you should do a person this person here uh just go to labs at chaosgroup.com email us give us your ideas we'd love to hear them uh if you have any suggestions for uh uh, you know, uh, uh, with respect to shows that we've already done or you have ideas or criticisms or any of your thoughts would be welcome to do. Uh, again, that's labs at chaosgroup.com. And if, don't forget to rate us on Apple Podcast. And uh, I think that's it, right? <laughs> yep. With that being said, please enjoy episode number 348 with Paul Deasy. Welcome to another CG Garage where the chaos group talks. You'll know it's over when the last bucket drops. We're gonna fire off rays 
in high dynamic range we know that ambient occlusion is passe global illumination won't lead you astray and while image-based lighting is really swell you need to make sure everything has for now. Well, cool. Well, thank you so much, Paul. This is this is awesome to have you on. This is, uh, I believe, uh, a user-requested episode. <laughs> That's cool. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, which is great. Um, and you know, I've actually wanted to, you know, there's there's you guys run a really great. Uh, com- there's a great community of of people who uh, work in ZBrush, and yeah. do a lot of ZBrush stuff. Uh, and that's a great community that I think I want to know more uh, more about and how you got involved with all of that stuff. But uh, I think I first want to know uh, a little bit about your background and what got you interested in art and computer graphics and all of those things. Yeah, well, it, it's 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 the kind of uh, artist trope story okay. of like uh, from from a very young age I was just into drawing and you know batman and comics and watching addicted to the batman animated tv series and stuff like that all my christmases were filled with just batman <clears throat> really <laughs> yeah, yeah pretty much just batman all the way through um and i think when it, once i finished school and you know you're trying to pick out what you're going to do in college and stuff so immediately i wanted to do something in animation but in Ireland, it was very, like, it was almost, if you want to be an artist, people would be like, mm, maybe you should try something else because maybe you won't be able to, you know, that might be very hard to get into and stuff. You're getting that as, as a kid growing up. Yeah. But uh, I guess I was just stubborn. I kind of just stuck to it. I I was told by school to do, um, to go to a, another college where they, they do, like, traditional uh, painting and uh stuff like that and instead I just wanted to do animation so I ended up going to a place called Ballyferma College okay um, which is um, in Dublin in Ireland and I studied uh, traditional and computer animation uh, for a couple and of years and around what year was this? that would have been 2007 when I started in okay in that course um and I did it for three years. Uh, all the while, I wanted to be a 2D ba- layout artist. I wanted to draw uh, backgrounds for animation. And then I finished college and I was just kind of working on my own stuff. And I started doing painting. I started painting the backgrounds and then I started adding characters. And then I started getting more and more into the characters. And then I started to focus on just the character uh, drawing and painting characters until eventually someone kept at me to try zbrush because i wasn't really into the technical sides of cg initially okay that that was like what was blocking me from going into it even though i had done a little bit in college Uh, Mm -hmm. and i liked it but i much preferred the 2d end of things because i liked i I just preferred the more artistic room and someone introduced me to zbrush where it was like yeah you can just be you don't have to worry about the technical stuff just sculpt and that's what that's what got me into CG then, because once once I could do that, um, I think that was that was a, probably about three years after college. Okay. Uh, and then I started using ZBrush, and from there I started doing sculpts. Still didn't know anything about retopology or any of the technical stuff, and then got a job. But I somehow got a job regardless as a character artist and they let me in as a junior and I learned that stuff then uh, kind of on the job which is the best way to do because it, it was pure and utter panic because you know it's like <laughs> yep. these are your base tasks and I don't know how to do some of them so it was like learn mm-hmm. fast before they figure out that you know this guy isn't <laughs> isn't able to do what he needs to do so let's let him go so it was like just panic and learn as much as I can so right. I managed to I managed to keep my job thank, thankfully and uh, yeah, it kind of went from there. Well, well, that's that's amazing. And you know, the thing that's that's interesting to me, and 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 you know, I think about this a lot. Is is that's exactly some of the things that that tools like ZBrush able to do because 
uh, people who wouldn't have entered into computer graphics did because yep. of the, the 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 natural way that it works. Right? It works like a it works like a tool. Be listen to Alex Alvarez over at, who founded Nomen. He used to do all of his creatures by with nerve surfaces and it just sounds like trying to design a creature by quilting a couch you know it just doesn't make any sense <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly well, so good. yeah but so, so zbrush has just sort of changed everything for a lot of people right totally totally well you, you think of that natural progression of you know like a lot of artists start with a pencil and paper so mm -hmm. if you give them a modeling like if you just ask them to model now like the box model it's a big step it's a big change from just drawing where sculpting is much more it's it's an it's an easier transition so right zbrush opened the door for people to to digitally sculpt and it, it, it people like myself were able to find that way in and, and did you do any kind of sculpting like actual physical sculpting before yeah. yeah yeah we did it in college like i did a lot of life drawing and all that but like you know that goes with animation and we also did a lot of uh sculpting from life and that got me into sculpting so and i after a while started just to buy my own clay and do some little sculpts at home and stuff but it was more for fun at the time because mm -hmm. i was still in that like i want to be a 2d leo artist or at, at a certain stage it was like maybe i'll be a concept artist or whatever uh so i was still in that mindset but i still did it for fun so, which helped when I did make the jump over, but so did the 2D, you know, all those principles still carry across the fundamentals, like the, an the anatomy and the shape language and all that kind of stuff. They translated straight across. It was just a case of, well, figuring out how to use ZBrush initially, like getting used to the UI and ZBrush and stuff. And once I did, I was able to apply all those same fundamentals again. So it was like that much easier transition. And do you still do traditional drawing and some sculpting as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not as much as I'd like. I, I, because <laughs> you know, time starts to get the older you get, time starts to get yep. more and more precious. And uh, so I, I'd love to be able to do like at least an hour a day, but I don't always get to do that. But I'll try. Yeah, I, I often um, like on the Z, on the Pix Logic live streams. I'll try to always, not always, but I'll, I'll try to generally work on my own designs. Okay. Uh, in which case I'll, I'll draw, I'll sketch something first. Now I'll usually okay. flesh it out further in the 3D stage, but I'll, I'll, I'll generally try to do a sketch and figure out something myself. And that's literally just to do that, just to keep me, keep myself drawing and keeping that stuff fresh in my mind kind of because right. right. it can you know yourself it can go away if you don't use it well let's let's talk a little bit about designing a character obviously you know the way that you're doing it in, in cg and, and and the challenges that that involves so like what what are some of the challenges like how do you how do you when you think about a, a character or you know something you know i've seen your artwork on ArtStation. it's it's a lot of fun it's great it's great and you're trying to tell some there's some stories that are being told in every one of your 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 images and your, your sculpts. Yeah. So what, how do you, how do you come up with that? Like what's, what are some of the things that, you know, allow you to think about it and you're trying to tell the story and, 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 and design the character? Like what's, what are some of the steps you creatively go through to get there? Uh, well, it's, it's kind of a case of, uh, I'm always trying to think of what will I, what will I work on next? So I'm always, if I, maybe I see, a, maybe it's a movie and it's just a genre maybe. And I'm like, oh, I'd like to try something in that genre. Like it could be sci-fi or it could be, you know, like uh, I remember doing the, the the, detective sculpt that I did. Uh, that was, I had watched, oh, I can't, I, I think I've, I was visiting someone and it was on the TV and they kind okay. of brought it down while we were talking, but it was in the corner of my eye. I can't remember what the name of the film was now, but it was like a film noir type of uh-huh and i was like oh, i'd love to what they're yapping away just telling me about their day and i'm in my head going i wonder what i could do with like a film noir thing because i've always <laughs> that thing but uh yeah so I, just, I i wanted to do like a detective or whatever and then it's just a case of from from that point i actually sat down and like wrote a story out 
of where okay. he ends up in like New Orleans and stuff. This is a while ago now, so I couldn't tell right, you. Right, 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 right. But like, it just it wasn't a big, just something thrown together, um, right. and a lot of it I didn't like use to put into it. But it's good to have a fleshed out kind of story to think yeah. what your character, who your character is, and how they would dress, and what what year they're in, uh, what what's the situation that they're in. Because you can add, adding, like you said, the, the those little narrative things, even if it's just, obviously if you're doing like a, a any sort of film, any sort of production, then they're in that situation. But right. even if you're just doing like a still render just for your portfolio, it's good to think of that stuff because you can add in these little, these little subtle things even into like, right. you know, maybe a piece of jewelry or something that tells a little bit of where they're coming from or who they are. Uh, so that's important and it, it just it's it's it can be subtle but it makes such a big difference i think it just because you don't want your characters to be really generic and that just breaks right. that, i think right no i think there's a lot i mean uh, i was looking at the the hellboy one that you did as well yeah. and there's so much going on in that that picture <laughs> yeah right? there's a lot of stories a lot of things so obviously you know you must what's kind of fun i guess is you get to 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 imagine all this story and you're probably thinking about them as you're sculpting it's like oh yeah, yeah this oh. happened and then and then uh you probably continue to develop the story as you're sculpting itself <laughs> yeah absolutely right? absolutely like that hellboy one just started as um it was Derek Lofman, uh -huh. a really nice 2d artist and he'd done this uh, just bust of Hellboy and I right. came across it on Pinterest or something like that and, and I saved it aside and I thought oh, I'll start that in the next stream I'll just do a bust for that week and then I'll move on but uh, a lot of people uh, uh, like myself included are a big fan of Hellboy and a, a lot of people kind of responded to it and I really I really liked how the, the sculpt was the especially the shapes and the face were coming out so I thought I'll, I'm just going to go I'm just going to do the full body. And so I just continued it from there um, right. and just found all the reference for, you know, what his jacket looks like and so on. And, and like that, then I was like, he's into cats. I know like from, <laughs> from all the content I've seen of Hellboy over time, I know he's into cats and I had sculpted a cat a while back to print it. And right. I was like, I wonder. So I pulled that file in and kind of put it in his hand. Mm -hmm. And then, because he was supposed to be, I, I kind of put it to the people on the stream at the time. Yeah. And like maybe he's just having a smoke break. Just <laughs> why not? Because he had a cigarette uh -huh. in his mouth. I was like, maybe he's just yeah. having a smoke break. Why we don't have to make some big dynamic, um, you know, action scene every time or whatever. So, and right. I always like the more subtle kind of vibes. So right. maybe he's just having a smoke break. And then he had the cat in his hand. And I was like, maybe he's rescued the cat. And then so I put the tentacle in where <laughs> and I put the sword in the tentacle as if he's just killed some sort of creature and saved this cat. And now he's having a smoke break, a well-deserved <laughs> break after. So that was basically how the narrative unfolded of that one. Well, it's, there's a whole, you see, there's a whole story <laughs> that at the same time. Yeah. I didn't even, yeah. it kind of came to me rather than I invented it. It just, as I was sculpting it, it just started to unfold. Yeah. And I like how it started. as like, I'm going to do a bust of Hellboy. And then yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm sculpting a tentacle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. Okay. So let, 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 a couple of things I want to talk about. Obviously, I want to talk to you about community. You mentioned, obviously, uh, you do streams of your sculpts, which I definitely want to get into and talk a little bit about that. But there's also, obviously, you're also, uh, you know, on, on places like ArtStation yeah. out there where there's a lot of people who do, uh, uh, you know, things like, like what you do and they put out their characters and they do things. What do you think about, you know, uh, the art community today and like how that has evolved, especially in the digital world and, and what that, you know, what that implies at the good end, you know, there, there could be some bad parts about it as well, but what do you think about the, uh, you know, what that community is like and how you, how, it would, how you fit into that? Yeah, I think, um, it's definitely changed. Like, I think it's, it, well, the good sides of it is because there's so much support within the community I think um, like for the most part I, I always say to people reaching out to me and 
whether it's the streams or maybe some people will just write a message to me on whether it's art station or maybe Instagram or whatever. Uh, and I'll I'll always try to help them. Um but I always say to them, like if you if you see an artist doing something, reach out to them. Now, you gotta be polite. But it there's an etiquette there that you have to because it, it can sometimes it can sometimes get overwhelming if s- tons of people are coming s- always to you. It can get overwhelming because there is like a pressure to you. You want to you want to reply to them all, but when you get a lot of messages, it's very hard to. Uh, and I'll often try to like if something keeps cropping up, I'll try to incorporate that into a stream or something. Um, but I'm, I, I'll always say to them, like reach out to artists because that's important as well as you from from my point of view it's great that you can make connections with other people in the industry across the world because like i'm in ireland so there's not it's like when you compare that to say la like the 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 community is much smaller here and you know they're not it's not employees from like disney and all these big companies um but true that like I've got to know so many. Even when I when I did go to LA, I met the likes of Shane Olson and Matt Torp, and we already knew each other. Like we'd never seen each other before. But it was I. I remember walking up to Matt Torp. He had a booth. He, he had a booth in um, um, Lightbox, mm-hmm. and I walked up and I was kind of thinking, I don't. Will I just? I don't want to say my name with the assumption that he'll know. So I tried to say it real subtly, just in case. And but as soon as I said, "Oh, hey, my Paul DC," he knew exactly who I was, and we got a picture together, and we were chatting. And the same with Shane Olson. I went over and introduced myself to Shane Olson, and we knew each other, and we were chatting like we were friends, like we knew each other before. Uh, right. So on on that end of it, that's great. That's really like that's that's a really positive side, uh, sure. because you're developing that community. And you can make contacts and you know that even opens up opportunities you know even there's a there's there's people that through the stream and through like discord and so on that i've gotten to know that are like haven't got a ton of experience in the industry yet but um you know if if it was if an opportunity came up where where i work there was a, a position available i'd be happy to contact one of them where they're at that level to be like, if you're interested, apply for this. And that kind of thing can happen. So um in that way it's great. Um Right. The only the only kind of negative side I can see sometimes is the kind of like culture, the the like and follow culture. That can get a bit because and I and I try to try to keep hammering that home on, on the likes of the streams that you shouldn't as much as it, it it's helpful to get a big following and it's great it's great to see when you post something and it gets a ton of likes and it's trending and all that's you know you get that satisfaction back from it after putting all that work in but uh it shouldn't be the point and it's very easy for that to become the point and people are not it's very easy then to lose that uh passion for the actual process of making something because right I mean that's what we do it for that's how we start you know as kids when we're drawing a picture we're not drawing a picture because we want to show everyone we're just drawing anything again and again right. and so I, I think it's important to try and keep that and I think the like follow kind of culture can be a bit threatening to that aspect of it do you think and and that is that is a very tough tough part especially you know i know a lot of the instagram i mean i spoke to um ash thorpe and he's like all but given up on all social media because of that Mm -hmm. he can feel it can be very threatening and 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 toxic in a lot of ways uh yeah yeah. and competitive which is also which is not goes counter to art (laughs) art shouldn't be competitive you know yeah so uh I'm, i'm always a little bit curious about about that but 
at the same time, you mentioned you talked about the community, right? And, and you helping people. That seems to be something that you like to do. You like to help people and do things like reaching out to them and doing things like the stream to, to, to help the community. What, what drives that <laughs> for you? That's a good question. I don't know. There's a, there's a you know, I, I, I think in most people there is there's satisfaction to be got from just helping someone and not necessarily getting a, like there's no there's no reward for it or anything it's just that is the reward kind of um mm -hmm. there's just something i think the same way if i make a piece of artwork and i put it out like the fact that i've made it there's the satisfaction to be had from just i've i've done it like that's it it's finished i did the final render and I'm happy with how it looks. It's it's kind of the same. Uh, you know, you could ask like, why why is that satisfying? It, there's just something in us that enjoys the process and and seeing the 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 fruits of our labor sort of thing. Um, right. I think in the same way, there's there's something in people that just when you help someone and you see them doing better, there's a lot of satisfaction to be had from that. Uh, it's just, like whether it be the streams or sometimes people will contact me sometimes there's there's some people who've you know they're at every stream they're in the discord they're always commenting on anything i post or anything they're they're always there and sometimes they'll reach out to me and ask like hey i did this could you give me any feedback on it and mm -hmm. on, on a handful of times for for those people that are always there kind of i'll i actually have made a video and record it and put it into Photoshop, say, and draw drawn over it and said, This is what you should do, this is why you should do it and all that right. kind of and and then you see them and then they come back and they're like, Oh, I, I applied that and I see what you mean by this and it's and it's now like say it's a couple of fundamental things that they, they're not quite hitting. And then they right. come back and they've hit it and you're like, Yes, go and then and then they post it and it does well and yeah, there's there's a lot of satisfaction to just seeing someone grow, and you're you're partly responsible for helping them get there. There's just satisfaction there. I, it's hard. Abs I I do know what you mean because I I have exact you know feel very similarly to uh, to the way you do. But uh, yeah. who who helped you when you needed help? <laughs> yeah, well, um, <clears throat> there's a there's a good few people. I mean, I know. On, on so many levels so like a, a friend of mine uh aiden Coughlin was the the guy who said to me i went to college with him and he was the one who kept at me he was like try zbrush and you know at first i was like i'm not really into the 3d thing i just just try it just try it he kept at me i was like all right i'll try it and that's so i mean if it wasn't for that I, maybe i wouldn't have ended up in zbrush at all uh, right. and and then all the way to like when i started in the industry like I think the first six months actually working in the industry was like the most growth as an artist that I've probably ever had. That was when I, like I did the, uh, the mouse sculpt from Samuel Young, uh, yeah. from his, uh, design. And that was the first time, like, I think on art station, like I, I know I'm saying like follow culture and now I'm going to get into that. But, um, mm -hmm. like, I think I had like 32, followers or something on art station and then like i posted that and like overnight i had over a thousand because that just right. and that was in that period where it was there was probably things that notes that i wasn't quite hitting and then i had right. you know, i had um i i was really lucky when i started in the industry i had like a, a whole bunch of artists literally sitting around me across my screen and we'd all a lot of us would like you do your day's work and then after you'd spend an hour or two in in the office working on your own sculpt that you had there and uh we'd, we'd be talking to each other and giving each other feedback and all that kind of stuff and then um, i had a, a my supervisor at the time steph stefano the boy uh he 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 had come he was over in ireland he'd come over from la he had been working in disney and he had tons of experience um and he was sitting right next to me. So if I did anything wrong, 
he was straight on me. Oh, Any time, he was like, what, what, what are you doing that? I'm like, right. I don't know. <laughs> and then he, <laughs> that's how you're supposed to. This, this doesn't yep. work because you've done this and do it this way and you'll see it's this now the balance is better or whatever. Um, and, and then, you know, there's another, I, I, I don't want to get into names too much because then I, if I don't name someone, but you know, no, yeah. I know, but yeah. it's important. It's, it's, it's about paying forward then. Right. So in, like yeah. now that you've gotten to a level. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cause uh, yeah, you, I was in that position. We were all in that position at one stage, you know, where mm-hmm. you're trying to get into the industry or you're a junior or you're in college or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. And it, it, it's not, it isn't like an easy thing to just become a professional artist. So it's, you need the support and uh, I needed the support. So now that I'm in a position to give it, it just seem, it would seem wrong to not, you know, to just ignore people and not give that support. You need to kind of pass it on. So yeah, there was a, there was a ton of people there, including my, actually my teacher, my 3D teacher in college was the one who told me he had seen my portfolio on LinkedIn. And um, at the time, to- I never even posted on LinkedIn at that time. And I just happened to post that day. I just shared my art station link and he seen mm-hmm. it. And he was the one who said he was then working. He, he had, was part time in the college and they were working in an animation studio. And he seen that and he said, oh, you should apply here. And I'd, I'd never worked in the industry. I thought, well, I'm, I'll, I'll try, I'll apply and see, but I'm, I'm thinking I'm not going to get into the industry. Not because in, it was a studio called Brown Bag in Ireland, which is a relatively big studio in Ireland. So I was thinking, there's no way I'm going to get into that level of studio this quick. And, uh, but yeah, I, I got it, did the interview and I got in. So, and then I was surrounded by all those artists. So. Yeah, it, he was a big help as well because if he hadn't have seen that, I would have never thought to have applied there. Yeah, you know. Yeah, well, you seem very humble, <laughs> which is a <laughs> good the thing. Irish thing. It's like self-deprecation. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah, I've known, I've known a couple of a couple of Irishmen there. They're definitely <laughs> everything <laughs> seems negative all the time. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is, it is. You have to find the positivity between the lines, basically. Yeah. 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 It was, what was it? Uh, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, uh, Colin, uh, uh, the actor, uh, he was telling oh, Colin, great, Farrell. Uh, uh, Colin Farrell. Yeah. He was saying, yeah. um, uh, an Irish joke is like these two Irishmen are looking at this beautiful sunset in front of them. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. And they go, Oh, we're going to pay for that tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. <laughs> I must remember that one. <laughs> it's like yeah it's very it's very funny but I, yeah i'd like no it's great and i think it's really interesting that you you know do you think that there's something about irish culture and irish uh, irish uh sentiments that that influences your stories and your and your the way you think about art um I, it probably subconsciously i i'd imagine it has to i, I right I, like consciously I, i'm not so sure but I, subconsciously i think it has to like I, I tend to lean into like with maybe with lighting I tend to be more dramatic. I always like to be dramatic. I don't like to, you know, just do like a, a very display render type of finish. I like to, you know, pump up the like contrast and all that kind of thing. Uh and I like to be telling a kind of somewhat dramatic start. But I like the subtleties. I like the in-between moments of dramatic stories, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the calm parts of the. Um, th- so yeah, there there definitely could be. There definitely could be, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I think it's interesting that you like the in-between stories, right? Just like when you were talking about the the Hellboy, is like this is after the battle, but before the finale. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm yeah. not like when the tornadoes destroying the place mm. yeah but after that scene <laughs> where like the person standing there and the tornado has gone and it's right. the aftermath and just the read of that frame you know how the light works and how to tell the story of like the sadness now that takes place in this that's a right. uh, from working in the industry with you know because 
everywhere you work it seems in the animation industry you're working with everyone in the world like it's 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 very multinational mm-hmm. and uh all everyone always says because here we'll have like film festivals and stuff where there's a lot of like irish short films put in and uh everyone always says why are all the irish stories are always sad and we're like yeah i guess they are yeah i think which is probably well we're supposed to be you know poets and this and the likes and our history is kind of morbid in places so there's probably some of that leaking in and those melding together so that's probably what we tend to tell a lot of like sad stories yeah but they're they're also even your well your sense of humor is definitely very dark which is also a one of i yeah. think i like i like dark humor personally yeah, yeah. like well it's what's the the horror film that my family absolutely loves grabbers i have loved oh, grabbers no. have you ever seen grabbers no it's a it's an irish horror film comedy it's oh, really right. good <laughs> it's pretty low budget but it's right. pretty hilarious yeah okay. we'll have to, we'll have to do halloween time so it's definitely something yeah, worth, uh, worth, worth going into <laughs> holy, holy. um so so yeah so but that's that's really cool so let's talk a little bit about your 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 involvement you know in in you know the zbrush community and how did you you know obviously you learn zbrush and you know there's a lot of people learn zbrush but you got much more involved in the community and, and sort of pixel logic and and sort of champion and sort of are now you know an ambassador in some ways to 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 them so how did uh how did that happen? How did you sort of get, yeah, into, get involved that way? It's bizarre. Uh, <laughs> it is bizarre. Because uh, I used to watch those streams. And like it's weird to be actually doing them now when you think yeah. back. But, uh, yeah, I, I, well, early on, um, ZBrush contacted me about one of my pieces to use as a, a, an image for a marketing campaign. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that at that stage, maybe I was on the radar. Um, and then I met uh, Jamie LaBelle at mm-hmm. um, Lightbox when I went to LA. Okay, was when I, was this? Around? Uh, this was like three years ago. Okay. Three years ago. Um, because I, I remember saying to him, oh, I can't wait to come over next year to the Zebra Summit. And then, of course, right. we had COVID and all that stuff. And then, right, right, right. right. Uh, but um, it was actually Matt Thorup, uh, another stylized sculptor, who mm-hmm. said, when I talked to him, he was like, oh, come over here, I'll introduce you. And introduced me. And he knew who I was. And right. uh, then not long after I got back from LA, I got an email to do um, the ZBrush Masters series. Okay. Uh, so I, I did the ZBrush Masters series uh, and that was really cool. And then I think just not long after that then, uh, they emailed me again. And during, well, you know, you're prepping for to start and you're doing all that. And so I was just like chatting to Joseph Drust and stuff. And... Right. Um, it came up about doing Pixel Logic Live, and I said, "Yeah, I'd love to do it. It'd be it'd be great." And they were like, "Oh yeah, we'll see. Maybe we can we can get you in to do Pixel Logic Live." Right. And, uh, so I did the ZBrush Masters series, and then uh, and that's ZBrush Masters is not live, right? Or is it live? Yeah, it was live. Yeah, it was live. Okay, so you're what, explain a little bit what what that is and what people can get out of it because not everyone might know about sure <laughs> about what that series is. Yeah, that was just that was like a, a kind of once off like episode for uh, whatever selected artists and for each artist they brought them in and mm-hmm. talked about like their process and you know how they got into the industry and whatever else uh, particular maybe particular pieces of work they did uh, it, right. it was it was it was largely up to the artists too of course about what what they would like to talk about um, and sure. I decided to do it wasn't until after i seen the other artists like uh like rafa grazetti and so on like mm-hmm. there was a load of big artists so it was really cool to be involved in that to be alongside all these huge artists that i'd known for years mm-hmm. and uh, i i decided to do a live demo which okay. i didn't see really any of the other artists doing i was like oh maybe i bit off a lot there but uh it, it went well like it, I, I enjoyed it 
and uh, I a lot of people seem to really respond highly to it because I kind of went through the 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 process um, of how how I put together characters and sh- and did it step by step and I and I done the kind of you know the cook and show thing of like here's one I prepared earlier and skipped ahead to just so I could right. fit in because I, I, I'm trying to remember now I think it was two hours I want to say two hours right um and yeah that went that that was it, 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 I managed it in the end it was a it was a tall order for the two hours that we had uh, especially with because you're you know answering questions and stuff as well as sculpting which is can be right. tricky um, and the, the so they brought in I, I'm not sure how many artists now they brought there was a, there was a lot of episodes in the end uh, right talking about you know the the, the general uh, how you got into the industry how do you approach certain things and their artwork and stuff it was really interesting a lot of really really cool artists and episodes that were done yeah it was really good well that's cool okay so then how did the live the live stream just happen naturally after that right yeah i think we were just after talking about it a little bit and then Mm -hmm. i guess they figured out how like where we would slot in and um then eventually they after not long after they reached out to me and said hey we'd we'd like to have you in for the pixelogic live if you'd be interested in that and um, i did the beta testing for zbrush then at the time as well and um yeah just started from there it was nerve-wracking though because you know like i said i'd watched it for so long and right now i'm gonna be one of these artists doing the zebra the pixelogic live streams and like that pressure of like i hope i do good i don't want to be the I don't want to be the only live streamer for Pix Logic that gets like two people watching every week or whatever because I'm just not doing it right. Or so I remember, like I I ordered a new microphone and um, I ordered like stuff for the like lights and stuff. <laughs> like, streamers have lights, right? Uh, yeah. But it seemed to work well. A, a lot of people. It was funny. A lot of people in the. Uh, master series when I did that were commenting about like my accent and stuff because I guess it's mm-hmm. not common to hear uh, a Dublin accent in like Pixelogic live streams or m- really many streams at all so uh, right. that seemed to work in my favour so I- I'm basically riding that wave <laughs> oh okay. good he's like yeah everyone likes my accent so that, yeah, that's yeah. working for it <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah follows <laughs> we'll get some more follows because of the accent not because <laughs> yeah. of the artwork <laughs> exactly, yeah that's it. Well, that's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Well, okay. So, but you are a regular on there, right? Is that is that is that right? You're on there pretty regularly. Yeah, I I do every second week, every second Wednesday. Um, I okay. Do a stream. I do a two hour stream. Um, I keep wanting to do more, but it's back to that time thing again of trying to find enough hours. Yeah. But um, I do every second week on on a Wednesday night, and that's. That seems to be enough to get by, but it would be nice to be able to do every week. But, you know, yourself, yeah. it's, hard to, it's hard to fit it in. But I've been doing it for... It's flown by. I've been doing it for quite a while now. Okay. I, 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 I actually... I'd struggle to tell you how long, but it's 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 gone a good while now. Okay. It's, it just... Especially true, like, you know, from working at home and everything, time has flown anyway, so... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so... Yeah, it's it's funny. Uh, like I, I looked a while ago. There's a there's a there's actually a fair amount of episodes now that I've done, and uh, right. which is really cool to see. It's cool because I'm in now. Like it's it's you know what I mean. It's not like I've done four. I'm like, is it? Are they gonna? Maybe I'm not doing so well. Like I've I've done it for long enough now that I'm obviously I'm doing something right. It seems. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I got I got kind of shocked when I figured out that this podcast has been going on for seven years <laughs> so yeah, wow. it's like like I, I didn't know that was yeah so but i think you're right the covid's kind of like time kind of stopped and we forgot that it was like almost almost two years have gone by. <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> which Absolutely. is insane i found out uh, this week i got my my one year anniversary in my current job because i okay. changed jobs during i changed uh studio during <laughs> And it popped up on LinkedIn, and I, I was like, I thought I was there like four months. It's been a year. 
yeah it's crazy how yeah it's crazy time has been it's it's like being stuck in a loop it's weird yeah well let's talk about your current job where are you working now uh, i work for a company called giant animation um, uh uh-huh. it's in dublin as well it's a smaller studio um but they do mainly they're working mainly on tv and they are they've done some um specials and uh they just do what what attracted me to them was the style of work they do and the the way they treat their artists i don't know anyone who's worked there that doesn't love that studio um it's the the like you're on a first name basis with the owners um mm-hmm. it's like they 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 want to know what you think when you're doing the artwork which you know when you're in bigger studios you know it, because of so many people it's it, just by that nature you kind of have to this the company has to run a certain way because you can't be personal with everybody when you've tons and tons of employees right um, but it's really creative uh environment and the style that they do is really cool it's some of the some of the coolest work and that's for me what attracts me to a studio more than anything is what will i be making and a lot of the like the the stuff that i'm getting to make with them on a day-to-day basis and working with the owners who are artists themselves and really talented uh and they're you know i'm working back i'm doing like back and forth and they also with them i i'm actually getting to like design and 3d a lot of studios you know for a character modeler in a character modeler position you'd be given uh, a design and you have to follow that design and depending on the studio you might have to like really really hone in you have to get exactly everything almost line for line in uh, in your character um which depending on the kind of <clears throat> the kind of modeler you are you either like that or you prefer the other method which is maybe you're given something a little bit looser and then you get to interpret it. or in my case it's kind of that combined with sometimes i'm just designing the character myself it's just i'm given the brief and i just design the character in 3d which i love love doing so um that's that's it's it's kind of ideal in terms of how they work and how i like to work is we've found a nice sweet spot that's great that's really cool and yeah. so like how i mean obviously i mean i've seen some of the, their work because i was you know looking at <laughs> some yeah. information which is really great um and you definitely like you said that your style seemed to mesh it's surprising to me that you've only been working there for a year yeah. <laughs> it seems like you would have been working there for a while just just based on the artistic style yeah, yeah. uh but uh but that's that's really cool so what do you and when you say that they you know they uh they treat their artists well what 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 do you what 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 needs what do how do people need to treat their artists what is the best way to do it and what's yeah, what are some of the mistakes that are made which I'm saying. Question, really isn't it um <laughs> yeah so i i think like first and foremost for me is not kind of if you treat your artist like they're just the tool to a mean for a means to an end like just yeah just do the job and you're not letting them be involved creatively like you're hiring an artist and then you're not letting them be creative that's a big mistake because right your artist is going to burn out really quickly and they're going to lose interest because they're not getting to be, which is why they wanted to get into this industry in the first place, is to be creative because right. they're an artist. Uh, so if you, if you don't let them do that, um, or if you like belittle that part of the process, then that's gonna be, that's never gonna work out. I don't think it's not it's not a good way to to treat an artist. Um, I mean, there's of course, <clears throat> you know, just generally the the things you should treat employees well you know pay them fairly don't make them work crazy hours uh that kind of stuff of course um but for artists specifically i think it it really is important to let them be involved in the process of creating whatever it is that they're 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 doing whether it be characters or or lighting or animation or whatever else Um, and yeah, I, I, I've seen both sides of that and uh, 
it, it's it's really it's disheartening you know especially as a newer artist coming into the industry and you've all these expectations of you now what this job is going to be like and stuff if you you if you're just coming into the industry and then you land in that and you're not given any trust or any you're, you're never even asked what do you think uh you know it's 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 a big shock to the system because it's a stark contrast between what you're expecting and what you get um, yeah yeah I, I i think that's that that was what really stood out to me just because joint were so good at that they really want their artists involved in and of course you get your notes from the art director all that stuff you have to get that stuff that's you need right. you need because I don't want to set the expectation that, you know. I, well, I yes. I, I cre- Art is not always good as a democracy, especially. <laughs> you, know, you, need, you need someone in charge to make the final decision about things and, yeah. and sets the direction. Yeah. But I think you're right. I think there's, the, but, you know, as someone who used to be a, a supervisor, it's always challenging because sometimes you just, you, you, you just need to get something done and you're panicking and they're like, can you just do this and just do it? And then not think about that artist time. Right. So I think what I've learned is if you, if when things are calm, (laughs) give those opportunities of trust to the artists. And then that, and then when things get stressful, that artist will solve those problems better because of that relationship and that, that, that understanding that you gained before. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Absolutely. Yeah. Because we all have those times where, you know, there's just, I know there's a, there's a stigma around the word crunch in the industry, but like, so I don't want to say crunch, but there, we all have, in whatever job you're in, there's always times where things are busy. Right. And in those times, you may not have, maybe be able to afford to give an artist all that time to express whatever it is that they want to. But yeah, I think you're right in terms of, if, at least if you're trying, if you're at least the artist feels there's a balance trying to be met that they're, right. they're getting something it doesn't have to be it shouldn't be constant but yeah it's it's yeah there's definitely a it's a it's a bit of a dance sure. it is it is and i think it's really you know it's a it's a it's a good thing the treating treating the artist fairly i mean they i think for a long long time in the in you know especially in the early days of visual effects there was artists were not really artists they were technicians right they were button pushers in a lot of ways and 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 that was a challenge and a lot of cg artists enjoyed the challenge of working with the technology instead of actually doing something creative yeah i think it's interesting that you know for you just technology seems to be very secondary towards your art inspiration (laughs) in a lot of ways yeah i i think that's like a, a kind of newer version of the artists in the industry is because of the because of how the technology has grown and, and allowed for you to be more artistic without the technical knowledge uh, mm-hmm. or without as much technical knowledge um but that said over time that like i started it when i when i came into the industry being like ah oh, i don't want to do the technical stuff that stuff is going to just be a headache for me all the time I'll, i know i'll have to do it at some stage you know retopology and so on mm-hmm. but if i can avoid it i will uh but over time i became more and more interested in that and you know now doing topology and like figuring out you know doing blend shapes uh which is uh, blend shapes to me is like the ultimate in terms of a character modeler's tasks that they will get the blend shapes is like the the ultimate middle ground of creative and technical because they have to work together but they have to look good right they have to like there's so many little things that you can get wrong in blend shapes and then you give that to the animator and you get a ton of notes and then you're coursing the animator and the animator is coursing you and the riggers in the middle losing their hair and it's just a disaster but the the longer i've done it i i've now become like it's i'm really i love doing those things now and i lo- I, i'll sit there and play with like ways to improve the topology and and i enjoy it like figuring out a puzzle kind of uh, right. or even and then even like learning different softwares or different tools like over time it it was definitely not the case initially but it it 
it snuck in over time when I wasn't looking. And, right. Uh, because, you know, the tools will allow you to be more creative. You know, like I, I learned when I started in the industry, basically I just knew ZBrush. And then I had to learn Maya. And then but learning Maya opened up new ways to do things that were quicker. And uh, it meant I could get to the result that I wanted without having to fight something. Right. Uh, and then I learned Substance Painter. And, you know, now that's a whole other set of tools that to use to do other things that I, you know, adding normal maps and, you know, so I, it's, it's fueling the creativity too. So you can't really have one without the other. I mean, at the end of the day, you're working on a computer. <laughs> you're going to have to learn yeah. some software. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, it's interesting. I, I actually wanted to ask you a little bit about that because, you know, like you said, you know, you, when you do like, for example, your Hellboy piece, that's a standalone image and et cetera. And it's much more uh, creative all the way through, right? You you can just think about a, a lot of the technology is much more secondary there, but it's you modeling for animation is, it's a different beast and sure. involves a lot of thinking and you have to like, oh no, I have to do this because this person is going to take it and do something else with it. And I have, so, so how are some of the, how is that challenging in, in those ways? Uh, well, it can be, well, it can be, that can set some challenges even from the very get go when you're doing the design, depending on what level, cause like you, you might uh, like say it's different in feature because you've got more time to figure things out. But say in TV, from my experience working on a TV, you might be mm -hmm. like that, that's going to be a lot of trouble for the rigor, say. Mm -hmm. if we model it the way that 2d is designed so you might have to take that out and it could be something like the the hair is super long or something right i mean or there's they've got like long hair and a backpack or they've got like i remember doing one where she the, this character had like this huge big chunk of hair right and what we quick what i quickly realized was what happens if when she sits in a chair because the cut through behind her head she's gonna have to yeah. sit with her head way away from the chair <laughs> and it's stuff right. like that, that you have to, obviously you never have to think about when you're just doing a render for your portfolio or whatever um, right so all the way down at design like it immediate the problems immediately start uh but like that it's there it's it's nice to try and solve them too it you know because if everything was easy it wouldn't be very interesting so having some problems to a point uh is can be is is enjoyable to try and figure out maybe to, like because it's a creative solution you have to find a, a a way to try to keep the essence of it without the animator pulling the hair out trying to trying to make it work in the scene or the rigger pulling the hair out trying to rig whatever it is that you've modeled and um, right and then of course at then you get to the point where you've done your sculpt and everything's looking good and now you have to make it work for a rig so you have to do your retopo and it depends like <clears throat> that can be that can be that has a that's like a whole thing in itself uh which is why i think being a character modeler is quite an intricate job because you've to you're like you're the start of the 3D process. Like after 2D, now it goes into 3D and you're at the head of that. So you have to make sure that it's going to work for the rigger and mm -hmm. the black shapes are going to work and everything is also appealing and the art director likes it and the facial shapes work that when the animator makes facial shapes, which the camera is like here, that it looks good. Um, right. And you're responsible for all of those things. And when any of that goes wrong, they come back to you and then you know then you're sending it to also to the texture artist who might have to do some stuff with the uvs and that can also come back to you and how things are combined or separated or cut or whatever so there's there's a lot there's a lot to take in there um which not to anyone starting in the industry it's not to scare them because you do you you, uh, you know a junior that comes in is not expected to be able to nail all of that in a character straight away you, you you're expected to be right you need help and that's what your lead is there for just to make sure that everything goes smoothly and that you learn right um but there there's a lot involved because 
once you've got even once you've done your so you've done your retopo and mm -hmm. you know in a lot of cases if you're doing like a plain human character you'll have uh, as you'll know the like a, a, a base topology that goes across every human character that can share mm -hmm. and you're sharing the same skinning and you're sharing the same blend shapes in a lot of cases uh, and that's just to save time but you know you got to make sure they're in place properly or else the rigger is not going to be happy right. uh, and then you're you got your other characters that are just completely different or maybe they're animals or whatever and you need to do we top off from scratch on them and figure out how that works and that's like what do they need to do well, how do their faces move so how do i figure out the edge flow so it's all all of that and then you go into your blend shapes and that can work different depending on the studio some studios lean more into rigging to to start their blend to start their facial shapes and then some just entirely rely on blend shapes uh, i've done both of those um which doing it entirely with blend shapes uh, is a big job for a modeler and it's very difficult that's that's always where you know if you get a junior um they'll be able to sculpt and they'll need they'll need that extra attention and stuff which is expecting that's fine but they'll be able to sculpt they'll be able to use zbrush and then they'll be able to retopo they might need some refinement in their retopo or you know in terms of like they, they lose a lot of them they'll lose some of the shape you mm -hmm. know some of the nice edges and stuff they'll lose what was in the sculpt when they do the retopo that's usually the common thing um and then but then but they can kind of do it but then they get to the blend shapes and that's when they really start to just you can see them you can see them like the stress that they're going through trying to get the blend shapes to work and all the problems and all the like this doesn't work now but i don't know when that broke because that's the thing in cg like things break and you have no idea you broke something when? eight steps ago and you have no idea until it's too late now <laughs> you have to like that's why you, this is why you know saving and in increments and stuff is a thing so um yeah yeah the blend shapes tends to be the the biggest hurdle for a lot of kind of newer modelers that haven't done that a lot especially when the studio was using blend shapes and only blend shapes to drive the facial shapes because you've a lot right. to, you've a lot to do and then you have the yeah. co more complicated kind of you know like a lot of people take for granted what a wide what's involved in a wide smile in a wide open jawed smile you know because yeah. you have the teeth placement is the blend shape working the shifts in volume uh right. the tone placement everything is and it all has to be done right or else it's just going to look weird yeah a common one is like the teeth placing the teeth in the head uh, uh -huh. or, or creating the mouth bag properly so that right. it wraps around the teeth these are little things that people don't necessarily think of and even in i've seen in studios where it's done wrong and no one really notices and the, it's funny looking in the animation but people mm -hmm. are like well, that's just the way it is but it can be fixed if you do it right a lot of people just don't realize uh, right. so even the animators is like yeah that's just what it looks like what are you gonna do uh and they don't realize it can be fixed if you do if that's modeled correctly and it's neutral right. it's properly neutral when it's handed to the rigger that's another really important thing so there's so many that's only that's like that's not even half of it that's so many yeah. little things well i find it fascinating because you know i've i've uh i used to talk to um uh my, my friend steve pre he's a big uh, big uh animation guy and, and did rigging and all that stuff but obviously he's a he's a big supervisor at this point. Um, sure. uh, and he, he was telling me about some of the things about a face is like, you know, the thing about a face a head is it's, it's only got two bones in it. <laughs> it's yeah. like, right. And, yeah. and, and the, the, the jaw just, when we're talking, it, it barely actually moves. It doesn't go wow. We're not, we're not really opening our mouth. We're just, just barely moving it. Yeah. Uh, and it's all of these muscles in our face that are creating all these different things. And it's so complicated in so many ways. Oh, and just, like, uh, you, you know, the uncanny valley. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's very complicated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and uh, yeah, I did. A, I started a group uh, many years ago called uh, the Wiki Human Project, and where we were doing like trying to figure out all that stuff. And uh, sure. it's very, yeah, it's very complicated. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's cool, and I think it's interesting because you know you you are you do know all these things and even though you avoided that you you know the the technology somehow that uh you know it's not just a technology it's just thinking about physiology as well as you know how to keep expressions on something and understanding that and giving that to someone else to actually make that happen for you is kind of yeah, yeah. it's kind of cool yeah definitely i i that was when I started in the industry, I avoided rigors at all costs. And then I looked. They're the most technical people. <laughs> yes, by far. And if you treat your rigors right, they'll treat you right. That's a big thing to remember. <laughs> treat your yep. rigors right. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're, 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 but they're also, they, if they, you know, yeah, you got to get, you got to be, uh, you got to be very good with them and also give them something that they're, they're excited about as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Big time, absolutely. Cool. Don't make their job harder than it has to be because it's already hard. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, Paul. Thank you so much for doing this. It's really great to hear about uh, about stuff. And uh, we, you know, we'll ask uh, Kristen. We'll get in touch with you and ask for some links to all the different places that people can follow your work and also see some of your live streams and all of those things. It'd be really great to to sort of make sure that people have that opportunity. But your work is fabulous. Uh, your uh, your persona is wonderful as well. Thank you so much for, for being that, and uh, and for you know helping out the community and sort of being uh, being involved uh, uh, as you are and and being a mentor to a lot of people. So it's been really great talking to you. And you too. Thanks very much, Chris. It's been a pleasure. It's been great. So thanks very much for having me on. <laughs>